Hey, this is Rob from Side Effects. I'm going to quickly go over the mountain sop today. So I have a grid set up here already and a mountain sop. Grid I have set to a fairly high resolution because I want to really see the results of my, my mountain sop here. So I have a mountain sop attached. It's really just point noise. I'm really just adding noise to the point position to the geometry. And I can use any piece of geometry. It doesn't have to be something that I'm going to use for a terrain type thing and can add it to, to make rocks out of spheres and things like that. So taking a look at the parameter pane for the mountain sop, it's all fairly, the top part is really just standard noise settings. You know, height is exactly what it sounds like. It's the height or the amplitude of that noise there. Um, the element size is sort of like frequency. Um, it's the distance between the peaks of the lowest frequency noise. But yeah, the, the rest of this is pretty standard, standard pulse length. Time, of course, is exactly what it is. And then noise settings, again, these are really common noise settings, you know, that you would find in any sort of, when you're dealing with any sort of noise. Um, so you see here, playing with the lacunarity, we're starting to get some kind of really cool results. We can mess with the roughness to smooth it out and flow rotation. So what flow rotation is, is it's sort of the rotation of the swirl from zero to one. So you see it's giving you some motion there. So the problem with that, you could animate this, but if you were to animate this with a dollar F um, just for frame, you actually will get no results because it's only from zero to one. So it's you're really not seeing anything happening, even if there is something happening there. But what we could do in this case, to, if we wanted to take advantage of this rotation in some way, is maybe put a function like fit $f into $rf start, comma, $rf end, and then 0 and 1. And so that way, if you do have that, it's taking the, you know, the starting frame and the end frame, and it's just fitting that animation in between that value. So you're getting something that goes for the length of, of whatever you're working on for the length of your scene. So we other things to point out, you know, things like clipping, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you can bring things up to flatten out the bottoms, um, same as the top, you know, make plateaus, things like that, uh, to sort of give it a, a terrain field to it. We have a uh, lattice, which adds a little bit of stringiness to it. If you see, you know, it's not that, it, it's not, can't really see there, but it's adding little details in there. So you can see it here. If you focus right here, you see little details in there. As, and then if you warp it, sort of pushing it around, warping it around like that. And then we have a gradient warp. And what this does is this widens the peaks and valleys of the noise. So if we sort of move that around, you start to see what that's doing there. So again, you know, it's, again, it's fairly straightforward. It's, you know, don't let the mountain, the fact that it's called a mountain sop mislead you. Um, it is adding point noise to uh, your geometry. So in addition to creating mountains, you could also just rough things up or, or add a little bit of variation to uh, any piece of geometry.